Snow White Once upon a time in the middle of winter, the flakes of snow were falling like feathers from the clouds. A warm-hearted queen sat at her palace window with an ebony black frame. She was stitching her husband's shirts. While looking at the snow, she pricked her own finger with her needle. Three drops of blood fell upon the snow. Now the red looked so well upon the white that she said, Oh, I wish I would have a child as white as this snow, as red as this blood, and as black as the wood of this frame. Soon afterwards, a little daughter was born to her. She was as white as snow, and with cheeks as red as blood, and with hair as black as ebony. From this, she was named Snow White. Before long, her mother died. About a year afterwards, the king married another wife. She was very beautiful. However, she was so proud and haughty that she could not bear anyone to be better looking than herself. She owned a magic mirror. When she stepped in front of it, she said, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of us all? The mirror replied, The queen is the fairest of the day. Then she was pleased because she knew that the mirror always speaks truly. Little Snow White grew up day by day. She became prettier and prettier. Now she was as beautiful as the noonday. In fact, she was more beautiful than the queen herself. All the people said that she was the most beautiful and fairest girl in the world. One day, the queen asked her mirror again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of us all? The mirror replied, The queen was fairest yesterday, but Snow White is the fairest now. This answer so angered the queen that she became quite yellow with envy. From that time, whenever she saw Snow White, her heart was hardened against her. She hated the little girl. Her envy and jealousy increased so high that she had no rest day or night. One day, she called a huntsman and said, Take the child away into a forest. I will never look upon her again. You must kill her and bring me her heart for a token. The huntsman listened with fear. Next day, he took the maiden away into a forest. He drew out his knife to kill her. Snow White began to cry. Dear huntsman, save my life. I will run into the wild forest. I will never come home again. This speech softened the hunter's heart. Her beauty also so touched him that he had pity on her and said, Well, run away then, poor child. At the same time, he thought to himself, The wild beasts will soon devour you. He felt as if a stone had been lifted from his heart because her death was not by his hand. Just at that moment a wild boar came roaring along to the spot. As soon as the huntsman clapped eyes upon it, he caught and killed it. He took its heart and carried it to the queen for a token of his deed. Now poor little Snow White was left homeless and alone. She had nowhere to go. She was overwhelmed with grief and fear. She didn't know which way to turn and go. She ran till her feet refused to go farther. She was also bewildered at the sight of so many trees. As it was getting dark, she saw a little house nearby. She entered to rest. In this cottage, everything was very small, but very neat and elegant. In the middle stood a little table with a white cloth over it, and seven little plates upon it. Each plate had a spoon, a knife and a fork. There were also seven little mugs. Against the wall were seven little beds arranged in a row, each covered with white sheets. Snow White, being both hungry and thirsty, ate a little morsel of porridge out of each plate. She drank a drop or two of wine out of each mug. She did not wish to take away the whole share of anyone. As she was so tired, she laid herself down on one bed, but it did not suit her at all. She tried another, but that was too narrow. Another was too short, another too hard. The last one or the seventh was just the thing. She tucked herself up in it. She went to sleep, first saying her prayers as usual. When it became quite dark, the owners of the cottage came home. They were seven dwarfs. They dug for gold and silver in the mountains all day long. These seven dwarfs first lighted seven little lamps and saw at once that somebody had been in because everything was not in the order in which they had left it. The first dwarf asked, Who has eaten off my plate? The second added, Who has sit on my chair? The third said, Who has nibbled at my bread? The fourth cried, Who has eaten my porridge? The fifth wondered, Who has used with my fork? The sixth grumbled out, Who has cut with my knife? The seventh complained, Who has drank out of my mug? Then the first dwarf, looking round, began again, Who has lain on my bed? That was because he knew that his sheets were tumbled. At these words, the others went to each bed. Looking at beds, five dwarfs except seventh one cried out, Someone has been here in our beds. At that moment, the seventh little man, running up to his bed, saw Snow White sleeping in it. He called his companions. He shouted at his friends to come. Then they held up their own lamps together. The bright light fell upon the little girl. 
Seven dwarfs shouted with wonder and held up their seven lamps, so that the light fell upon the little girl. Oh heavens, oh heavens, said they, what a beauty she is, they were so much delighted to see how beautiful Snow White was, they would not awaken her, leaving her to sleep. Instead, the seventh dwarf, in whose bed she was, slept with each of his fellows one hour, and so passed the night. As soon as morning dawned, Snow White awoke, and was quite frightened when she saw the seven little men. The seven dwarfs were friendly and asked her what she was called. Huh, my name is Snow White, was her reply. Why have you come into our cottage? they asked. Then she told them how her stepmother would have had her killed, but the huntsman had spared her life. She explained how she had wandered about the whole day until at last she had found their house. When her tale was finished, the dwarfs said, Will you look after our household? Can you be our cook, make the beds, wash, sew, knit for us, and keep everything in neat order? If so, we will keep you here, and you shall want for nothing. Snow White answered, Yes, with all my heart and will. From then on, she remained with them and kept their house in order. In the morning the dwarfs went into the mountains and searched for silver and gold. In the evening, they came home and found their meals ready for them. During the day, the maiden was left alone. Therefore, the good dwarfs warned her and said, be careful of your stepmother, who will soon know of your being here, so let nobody enter the cottage. Meanwhile, the queen believed that she was now above all the most beautiful woman in the world. One day, she stepped before her mirror and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? The mirror replied, The queen was fairest yesterday, but Snow White is the fairest now. The seven dwarfs protect her from your sway, amid the forest far away. This reply surprised her. In no time, she knew that the mirror spoke the truth. She knew, therefore, that the huntsman had deceived her, and that Snow White was still alive. In her secret chamber, she dyed her face and clothed herself as a peddler woman so that no one could recognize her. In this disguise, she went over the seven hills to the house of the seven dwarfs. She knocked at the door of the hut and called out, Fine goods for sale, beautiful goods for sale. Snow White peeped out of the window and said, Good day, my good woman. What do you have to sell? Fine goods, beautiful goods, the female peddler replied. Waist ribbons of all colors. She held up one which was made of many colored silks. I may let in this honest woman, thought Snow White. Snow White unbolted the door and bargained for one waist ribbon. Look how they suit you, exclaimed the old woman. Let me lace them up for you. Snow White suspected nothing. She let the old woman do as she wished. The old woman laced her up so quickly and so tightly that all her breath went out. Snow White fell down like dead. Finally, Snow White is out of breath. She is soon dead, thought the old woman to herself. She exclaimed, Now I am once more the most beautiful of all. The wicked stepmother queen hastened away. At twilight, not long after the stepmother had left, the seven dwarfs came home. They were much frightened at seeing their dear little maid lying on the ground, neither moving nor breathing as if she were dead. When they saw that she was laced to tight, they cut the waist ribbon to pieces. Sooner or later, she began to breathe again. Little by little, she revived. The dwarfs now heard what had taken place. They said, The old peddler woman must be no other than your wicked stepmother. Take more care of yourself. Let no one enter when we are not with you. Meanwhile, the queen had reached home. Before her mirror, she repeated her usual words. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of us all? The mirror replied as before. The queen was fairest yesterday, but Snow White is the fairest now. The seven dwarfs protect her from your sway, amid the forest far away. As soon as the mirror had finished, all her blood rushed to her head, because she was so angry to hear that Snow White was yet living. But now, thought she to herself, I will make something which shall destroy her completely. In her secret chamber, she made a poison comb by evil arts. The next day, disguising herself again, she took the form of an old widow. She went over the seven hills to the house of the dwarfs. She knocked at the door and called out, Good wares to sell today. Snow White peeped out and said, You must go farther because I dare not let you in. But still you may look, said the old woman. She drew out her poison comb and held it up. The sight of this comb pleased the maiden so much that she allowed herself to be persuaded and opened the door. As soon as she had bought something, the old woman said, Now let me for once comb your hair properly. Snow White agreed. Scarcely was the comb drawn through her hair when the poison began to work. The maiden fell down senseless. The wicked queen cried with joy, It is now all over with you. She departed in a hurry. 
Fortunately, evening soon came. The seven dwarfs returned. As soon as they saw Snow White lying, like a dead person, upon the ground, they suspected the queen. On discovering the poison comb, they immediately drew it out. Then the maiden very soon revived and told them all that had happened. So again, they warned her against the devil's stepmother and asked her to open the door to nobody. On her arrival home, the queen had again consulted her mirror and received the same answer as twice before. This made her tremble and foam with rage and jealousy. She swore that Snow White should die even if it cost her own life. She went into an inner secret chamber where no one could enter. There, she made an apple of the most deep and subtle poison. Outwardly this apple looked nice enough to have rosy cheeks. It would make the mouth of everyone who looked at it water. But its poison was so fatal that whoever would eat the smallest piece of it would surely die. As soon as the apple was ready, the queen again dyed her face. She clothed herself like a peasant's wife. Then over the seven mountains to the house of the seven dwarfs, she made her way. Whom she knocked at the door. Snow White stretched out her head and said, I dare not let anyone enter. The seven dwarfs have forbidden me. That is hard on me, said the old woman, because I must take back my apples, but there is one which I will give you for free. No, answered Snow White, I dare not take it. You should go right now. What are you afraid of, cried the old woman. I can't go with your doubt, see me. I will cut the apple in halves. I will eat the green part. It surely gives you trust. Then, you may eat the red cheek. When Snow White saw the woman eating the green part, she could no longer resist. Snow White stretched out her hand and took the poison part, the red cheek. Scarcely had she placed a piece in her mouth when she fell down dead upon the ground. Then the evil queen looked at her with glittering eyes and laughed aloud bitterly. She exclaimed, White as snow, red as blood, black as ebony is gone. This time the dwarfs cannot reawaken you. She reached home as soon as possible and consulted her mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of us all? The mirror replied, The queen is the fairest of the day. Then her envious heart was at rest as peacefully as an envious heart could rest. When the little dwarfs returned home in the evening, they found Snow White lying on the ground. This time there appeared to be no life in her body. She seemed to be quite dead. They raised her up and tried if they could find anything poisonous. They unlast her, uncombat her hair, and even washed her with water, and then with wine. But nothing availed. The dear child was really and truly dead. Then they laid her upon a bier, which is a kind of a coffin along with its stand. All seven placed themselves around it. Strangely enough, she looked still fresh and lifelike. Moreover, even her red cheeks had not deserted her. They wept and wept for three days without ceasing. Then they were prepared to bury her. They said to one another, but we cannot bury her in the black ground. Then they ordered a case to be made of glass. The dwarfs wrote her name with golden letters upon the glass, saying that she was a king's daughter. The dwarfs placed the glass case upon on a flat rock. One of them always remained by it watching. Through this glass case, they could see the body on all sides. Snow White lay peacefully in her case and did not change. She looked as if she were only asleep. She was still white as snow, red as blood, and black-haired as ebony. Even the birds bewailed the loss of Snow White. Animals in the forest came to protect the body of Snow White. It happened that a king's son was traveling in the forest. He came to the dwarf's house to pass the night. When he had examined it, he said to the dwarfs, Let me have this glass case. I will pay what you like for it. As I have already seen her beauty, I cannot live without Snow White. I will honor and protect her as long as I live. The dwarfs replied, We will not sell it for all the gold in the world. The prince said again, Then give it to me, please. When the dwarfs saw that he was so much in earnest, they pitied him. At last, they gave him the glass case. The prince ordered it to be carried away on the shoulders of his attendants. On their journey, it happened that the attendants stumbled over a small rock. From this shock, the piece of poisoned apple which lay in Snow White's mouth fell out. Very soon, she opened her eyes and raised the lid of the glass case. She rose up and asked, Where am I? Full of joy, the prince answered, You are safe with me. He told her what she had suffered and how he would rather have her than any other for his wife. He asked her to accompany him home to the castle of his father. Snow White consented. They were going to get married with great splendor and magnificent. Snow White's stepmother was also invited to the wedding. When she was dressed in all her finery to go, she first stood in front of her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of us all? It replied, the queen was fairest yesterday. 
but the prince's bride is the fairest now. At these words, the queen was in a fury. She was so terribly mortified that she didn't know what to do with herself. At first, she resolved not to go to the wedding. Still, she could not resist the wish to see the princess. So, she went to the wedding. As soon as she saw the bride, she recognized that the bride was Snow White. She was so terrified with rage and astonishment that she rushed out of the castle. She rushed towards a high cliff. From then on, she was never heard of again. Snow White and the prince got married and lived happily ever after.